the same hymns were chanted in the year 967 AD. Shak 889, when Reverend Yagivraha, the spiritual teacher of King Jayavarman V, consecrated the sacred shivling of Sri Tribhuvan Maheshwar while founding this temple in Ishwarpur in the ancient country known as Kambaj. <laughs> The prayer invoked the Lordship called Sri Tribhuvan Maheshwar, the great Lord of three worlds, and the Goddess Parvati as Shiv and Shakti, that is, the universal consciousness and the cosmic energy. The whole of Southeast Asia was swept by the wave of Indianization beginning from the first century AD. The Khmers of Kambuj became one of the most powerful and evolved societies. The local genius combined with the basic principles of Indian civilization in the fields of religion, art and culture gave rise to the world's most beautiful temples between the 9th and the 13th centuries. But somewhere in the early 15th century, the continuity of Khmer history was broken when due to frequent external invasions, Siem Reap, comprising the main Angkor temples, was abandoned as the capital by the Khmers. Today, the temple of Sri Tribhuvan Maheshwar is known as Banti Esrai and is located near Siem Reap River, about 25 kilometers northeast of the famous Angkor group of temples in the Siem Reap province of Cambodia. After more than 500 years, the Banti Esrai temple was discovered by the French in 1914 after the major Angkor temples had been located. At the time of its discovery, this beautiful temple was ravaged by forests and vegetation. The signs of human invasions were also evident. In the fourth decade of the 20th century, Banti Esrei was restored by the French by a process of anastylosis under which each structure of the temple was dismantled and rebuilt block by block, filling the missing sections with clearly marked new works. In Khmer language, Sri word comes from Sanskrit word Stri for woman and Banti Esrei broadly means a fortress of women. This name was given to the original temple of Sri Tribhuvan Maheshwar by the local people due to its enclosures and the beautiful female sculptures carved in the niches of its main shrines. The Banti Esrai temple is rectangular in plan and its general layout is simple and similar to other contemporary Khmer temples. The main shrines are surrounded by an enclosure with entry towers called Gopuram in Sanskrit on the east and the west. The whole temple is bounded by second enclosing wall with entry towers again on the east and the west. Between the two enclosures, there are six long rooms and shrines. The temple is further encircled by a moat. Beyond moat, there is the third enclosure with entry towers on the east and the west. A long causeway connects the main temple passing across the moat to the outermost entry tower in the east. In between the entry tower of the third enclosure and the outermost entry tower, there are pillared galleries and long rooms on both sides of the causeway. While the enclosing walls are made of laterite stones, the shrines and the carvings are made out of pink sandstones. These sandstones were quarried in nearby Kulen Hills and transported to the temple site via Siem Reap River and roads. 
the outermost entry tower of Bantia Sri Temple, which is also fourth from the main shrines, is located in the east, the direction of rising sun, considered to be auspicious to Hindu shrines. On the door pediment of this entry tower, which is fourth from the main shrines, is depicted Sri Indra on his mount, three-headed elephant, Ayuravat. Indra is one of the main gods of directions ruling east. He is also the god of rains and has been one of the most popular deities among Khmer's. He has usually adorned the frontons of many temples as if the Khmer's started their worship by paying homage to Indra. Below Indra is shown Kal, the mythological being considered to be guardian of the door. The Kal serves as a protector for the temple and is placed above the doorways. The legend says that to satiate his voracious appetite, the Kal asked Lord Shiv for a victim. Out of anger, the Lord Shiv asked the Kal to devour himself. Kal obeyed and devoured his own body except the head. When Lord Shiv found the Kal obeying his order, he placed Kal's head on the doors of the temples as a protector. The Kal has a bulb-like eyes, a human or a lion nose and claw-like hands. Beautifully carved in pink stone, the whole pediment itself is one of the finest pieces of art. It is in the easternmost entry tower that the inscription of the year 967 AD relating to the foundation of this temple of Sri Tribhuvan Maheshwar was discovered. And from this inscription, written in Sanskrit and ancient Khmer, that we come to know that this temple in the year 967 AD, Shak 889, was founded by a Brahmin named Yagivra, assisted by his brother named Vishnu Kumar. The construction of the temple was initiated during the reign of King of Cambridge, Rajendra Varman II, and completed during the reign of his son, King Jai Varman V. On the western side of the Kopuram is another pediment, Varum, the Lord of Waters in charge of West is depicted. The Lord Shiv, to whom the Bantiyas Rai Temple is dedicated, is a Mahayogi, the great ascetic, and his devotees are ascetics observing penances called Tapasvi and Yogi in Sanskrit. The area of the temple between the easternmost entry tower and the third entry tower was used as a hermitage by such devotees of Lordship. In Sanskrit, a hermitage is called ashram. And in ancient Cambodge, a hermitage for the devotees of Lordship was known as Shaiv Ashram. The buildings on the either side of the causeway, beyond pillared galleries, which are now in ruins, might have been used for this purpose by the devoted yogi. The east gateway leads to a long causeway. There are small decorative sandstone pillars on two sides. On both sides of this processional way, there are pillared galleries. These galleries might have been used by the devotees and pilgrims coming to the temple. On the left side, Behind the galleries are three long parallel halls. On the door pediment of the main left building is depicted Lord Shiv sitting with his consort, Goddess Parvati. Shaivism, devotion to Lord Shiv, became very popular in Cambodia from 5th century onwards. It emerged as a major religion especially in the 9th and the 10th century. The Khmer's regarded Lord Shiv as a benevolent deity, another creator. King Yeshu Varman, the ancestor of King Jayavarman V, 
during his reign in the 9th century, along with other hermitages, established Shaivashrams across the country for the devotion of Lord Shiv. He made elaborate rules and regulations for the management of these hermitages. The people engaged in the management of the temple, the guests, pilgrims, teachers, all were supposed to observe discipline of a high order. The intention was to achieve the ultimate purpose of human life, the attainment of liberation, merging back in the universal consciousness, and the liberation being the most difficult of all human enterprises to achieve, its path was equally difficult to be realized only by pure will and penance which these hermitages promoted and nurtured. Besides its founder, the first inscription of the temple gives us ample information about the contemporary kings, the rules and regulations guiding management of the temple and life within it, and above all about the sacred and pious environment full of devotion that prevailed in the temple. It says that Yagivra, the spiritual teacher of that Jayavarman V, the king of Cambodge, who had won over the king of Champa, who was brave like Devraj Indra, was disciplined and benevolent. He was also the initiator of Shaivism, the devotion to Lord Shiv. Yagivra was the son of a Brahmin Damodar who was a reciter of Ved, the sacred Hindu scriptures. The management of the temple was put under his supervision. There were many people, males and females, engaged in the caretaking of the temple all around it, inside and outside. There were villages around the temple. There were gardens, flowers, birds and animals in the temple. Every month on the occasion of festivals, he used to donate gold, cloth and cows to the Brahmins. He was given a golden palanquin and a fly whisk by the king in his honor. The inscription further describes that the guests and pilgrims were honored in the temple. The head of the temple was supposed to honor all the guests and offer them food. Yagivra used to provide medicines to the sick and knowledge to the disillusioned. His house always used to be full of orphans, blinds, old and needy people seeking help from him. Yagivra established many hermitages and excavated water tanks in the temples and consecrated many sacred shivling in them including one in a shrine at a place known as Lingapur. On the right side of the causeway, beyond pillared galleries, there is only one building. On the door pediment of the right building is depicted a story from Sri Bhagavad Puran. When the king Hiranyakashipu, who after a boon from Lord Brahma, became a tyrant and started doing injustice. The Lord Vishnu incarnated himself as a half lion and half man called Narsim and killed him to restore the order. Just before the third entry tower or Gopuram, there are two small buildings on the either side. A pediment lying on the ground is depicting a scene from Ramayan. In Ramayan, the great Indian epic, Sita was abducted by a demon, Virat. The scene is showing Virat holding Sita, while Sri Ram is rescuing her from the demon. The story appears in the Aranyakand of the sacred Ramayan. While wandering in Dandak forest, a large monster Virad, son of Jav and Shatrad, caught Sita to devour her. In a fierce fight, Sri Ram with his brother Lakshman won over him. When he was
was being buried by the two heroes, Virat revealed that he was in fact Gandhav Tumburu, who was under the curse of Kuber for having loved the Apsara Rambha. Originally, this pediment was placed on the eastern door of the third entry tower. On the western door of the same entry tower was another pediment, which is now lying in the museum in Paris. The story from Mahabharat is carved on it. In order to put an end to the upheaval caused by two demons named Sund and Upsund, the god created an Apsara, a celestial beauty, the Lothama, and sent her with a mission to create rivalry between the two demons. In the scene, two demons are trying to take away the Lothama.